My name's Angela and this is Devon Thread Tales. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I'm going to be uploading two videos at the same time and they are for my Closet Core Cali Shirt Sew Along. I decided to split the videos in the end because the videos Re the video was just so long because I've gone into such a lot of detail as I've been sewing it and I just didn't realise quite how long they were going to be and after lots and lots of thought I decided it was better to split it into two but like I say they're going to be uploaded at exactly the same time I'm going to put a link into the second video here and I'll also put a link in at the end of this first video as well so Within the description of my videos, I'm going to put a little time element detail and you're going to be able to click on those if you want to jump to a certain section. So there'll be the cutting out section, there'll be the, um, the bit where I'm connecting the collar or the facings or the button placket, that kind of thing. So you can click on those details as, um, as you require. So I'm going to now pass back to the previous video that I've recorded and I really hope that you enjoy it. Thank you. Today, today I'm going to be doing my Cali shirt sew along. So I talked about doing this in my uh, March plans video and I said that I had two different options that I was potentially going to do. So just quickly I'll go through what the Cali shirt looks like. So this is the packaging for it. It is a shirt with a high-low hem. It also comes as a dress and it also comes as a tunic. So it has three different length options. Now, it also has different button placket options. So you can have an exposed button placket, which is like an ordinary um, button down shirt, which totally opens up right the way down the shirt. You can have one which um, just opens up halfway and then the rest of the fabric is all as one. And you can also have it as a popover placket so that the buttons are covered over. And you can do this both on um, a fully button down shirt or this um, miniature version. It has um, a collar, which is an ordinary collar, sort of a turn down, you know, like almost like a man's shirt type collar. And it also has this um, mandarin or granddad style collar, which is here. Now, I decided that I was going to do my sew along in this fabric, which is a fabric that I bought from Guthrie Garney a couple of years ago. And I bought it because I saw somebody else had made the Cali shirt in it and I absolutely loved it. It's a really thick fabric. It's thicker than cotton. It is a type of cotton, but it's almost like a cotton linen blend and it's really quite thick. And um, I think it's going to make a really nice sort of casual shirt. I also said that I potentially was going to make it in this fabric, which is a lovely, um, soft, very thin chambray with these little Scotty dogs all over it. Now, I've actually gone ahead and made this version already, and I've made it with a mandarin collar, and I have extended the length of the shirt so that the front and the back match, and the front is longer than the original version, because I don't like this hitting above my tummy, because I think it doesn't really suit me so I quite like the fact that this is a bit longer and I've got the front and back to match and that's what I'm going to be doing on this version except I'm going to be doing the proper fold over pointy collar on the um, on this fabric here so that's what it looks like and I have to say I'm so pleased with how this has come out all of the seams are completely concealed it is just a really smart really satisfying make it's got a lovely little pleat in the back and you can choose between two different pleats this is an inverted pleat and there's also a box pleat i prefer the inverted pleat so i'm going to be doing the inverted pleat again but this is what it's going to be looking like very similar to this except for obviously it's going to have a different style collar so i'm going to show you the pattern I have obviously, because I've made it already, I have already traced out the pattern and I've already adapted my pattern as well. So I'm not gonna recut it to show you how I do it, but I am gonna show you and talk you through the process of what I did. Okay, I'm just quickly slipping this little bit of footage in because I completely forgot to tell you about the size range of this pattern, so I'm so sorry. So the sizes go in 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, etc. And they go up to a size 20, and that is a 
It's starting in a size zero, that's a bust of 31 inches, waist 24 and hip 33, and it goes up to a bust of 46, waist 39 and hip 48. So my measurements are a 36 bust, 30 waist and 37 hip ish and if I was to go by the measurements that are on here the size 10 is a 36 and a half inch bust a 29 and a half inch waist so very slightly smaller than my waist and a 38 and a half inch hip obviously slightly bigger so I've then looked at the finished garment sizes and in the size 10 that is a bust measurement of 45 and a half inches and a hip measurement of 46 it doesn't give the waist because it's a very straight garment it's very boxy so I don't think it needs to give the um, waist measurement because it's going to be the same as the hip so I did a little bit of research before making my first version of this and asked some people what they did in terms of sizes because personally I think all but 10 inches worth of ease in the bust seems really massive and I just wasn't happy that that was gonna look right I didn't want it to look I know it's gonna look like an oversized sort of sloppy shirt anyway but I didn't want it to look like it was something that was too big for me so after a little bit of sort of looking around and asking around I've ended up deciding to cut out the size 8 which gives me a finished bust measurement of 44 inches so it's still eight inches over and above what my bust measurement is and a hip measurement of 44.5 inches. So it, it is still really big and roomy, but I think that that's going to be OK. I think personally, I think I probably could have sized down two sizes and it still would have been OK. But I didn't want to mess with it too much because I, I don't know whether that would then start distorting the shaping etc around the shoulder and you have to remember that when you're looking at finished garment sizes even if they're too big they still have been made to be in proportion with your shoulders and things so if you are really going to make um, a severe sort of size alteration from what the pattern is suggesting you should do then it's always worth maybe doing a little trial run of it in some um, cheap fabric or some you know gash fabric that you have lying around anyway I'm going to go back to the rest of the footage now and get the cutting out done as you can see I've got my front shirt piece um, pattern piece cut out here and there's this extra section which is in a different paper um, I only had scrap paper so I had to do a bit of cutting and sticking <laughs> The back shirt piece and the front shirt piece, originally, the difference between the size is three inches in length. So the back piece is actually longer than the front piece by three inches. I wanted to extend the front piece so that it was longer and I wanted the back piece to match it. So I needed to alter both pieces. So what I did is I cut along the lengthen and shorten line, which is a straight line right across the pattern and then keeping my ruler on the grain line I moved my pattern piece down until it was um, four inches longer than the original pattern piece and then I stuck that down so everything was in line the grain line the outer edge and this um, center front edge as well so I kept that all in line and extended it all by four inches then what I did is I took my um, back piece and I extended that by one inch. Obviously the original pattern piece is three inches longer than the front so I wanted to make sure that they were the same length and having extended that by four inches I needed to extend this by one inch. I didn't really do anything technical to decide on the length I just held a tape measure up in front of me and decided whereabouts I wanted it to land and then measured the difference between the length of the shirt front in its original form and how long I wanted it to fall so I just did the same thing I cut along the length and shorten line and then making sure that this edge kept straight and this outer edge kept straight I just lengthened it all by one inch and that now matches the front section and they are both the same length. It is important to note that you also then need to take 
the button placket pattern piece for the front section and however much you've extended the front pattern piece by you need to do the same for the button placket so again I've extended that cutting along the lengthen and shorten line and I've extended that by four inches to match my centre front piece. It's also important to note that there are facings on the bottom of the shirt. Now you don't have to do the facings like I'm going to do them, however that is how the pattern comes and it is a really nice finish. So the front um, facing matches obviously the front pattern piece and the same with the back section, that matches the back section. However, this is wanting you to um, join this with a very different depth. And I think it's really important to note that this facing won't match properly on your back section when you sew it. Now, I haven't drawn out a new pattern piece and you could do that. But what I did is I actually altered this as I was sewing it. And I'm going to show you that when I get to that stage. Okay, so I have ironed my fabric and now I've got all my pattern pieces ready. I'm going to start cutting out. I don't quite know whether I've got enough to do what I want to do, but on the um, button placket, I think I might try and cut the fabric on the cross so I have a very slightly different look on that button placket. And on the little cuffs that go around the sleeves, I'd like to cut those on the cross. Now, ordinarily, I'd never advise anybody to go against what the pattern suggests in terms of keeping things on the grain. Um, but the reason I think it'll be okay is, first of all, the button placket has got um, interfacing on it so it's going to keep it nice and stable and the um, sections that go around the sleeve the little cuff bands they're not really doing anything they're just really for decoration so I don't think it's going to hurt for those to be cut on the cross oh and I might I can't decide whether I want a pocket or not I didn't put a pocket on the other version but if I do put a pocket on I might cut that on the cross as well just to make it look a little bit more interesting where I can I'm going to try and pattern match but I'm going to get that cut out and I will see you at the other end of that. <laughs> okay, the first section that I'm going to cut out is the back section and I've folded my fabric and just made sure that the grids, obviously, if this was just a, a busy pattern, it wouldn't matter too much as long as it was roughly right and you had the grain line sort of all matched up, it would be okay. But because this has got such a definite grid-like pattern on it, I want to try and make sure that everything is symmetrical. So I have put the edge of the fabric on one of the lines so I know that that is absolutely straight. And then I just sort of flattened out my fabric and just peeled it back to make sure that those lines are all lining up with each other on the top and the bottom section. So that is, so I'm going to put my back section on here and get that cut out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little bit of a note as to where, um, where the pattern is actually falling on the pattern piece. And I'm going to try and match that up with the front section so that hopefully the front and the back might match just on the side seams. If it doesn't, it's not a big deal, but hopefully I can get that to work. So I've cut my back section out and you might notice I've been dilly dallying around a little bit and that the reason being is I wasn't 100% sure if the front and the back were going to match up. So because I have cut the back section out, I'm now just lining up the front and the back, looking at where the side seams are going to be and I can see now that I've got that lined up and I'm really happy with where that is. So I'm going to cut this front section out. You might also notice that I've actually cut it or I'm cutting out the front section um, on the single layer rather than the double layer and that's because I want to try and get them really well matched up also because of the way I folded my fabric I have this spare area here so I'm able to cut this out um, which isn't double folded so where I've had my back section folded then this area was 
a single layer and then what I'm going to do is once I've cut that out I'm going to then turn my pattern piece the other way so it's on the flip side because obviously you have to have a mirror image if I cut it the same way well I'll, I'll have two like left pieces or two right pieces which won't be right what I'm also going to do is when I have cut out this section and I turn it over I'm going to try and make sure I mirror um, and match up the fabric so that the front sections are identical to each other and the grids are running perfectly parallel and in line with each other. So I'll just get this bit cut out. Okay, so I've got my front pattern piece and I've kept the pattern piece on the actual piece of fabric so I know which way I cut it cut it and now I'm just going to slip that piece of fabric out of the way, turn this over so it's on the flip side and then I'm going to use my piece of fabric and use that as a guide to see where I cut the previous piece so that I can get them to match perfectly. So I'm going to lay that on top, I've got that against a stripe so I'm hoping that it would be right for me to have this bit against the stripe too. Fingers crossed. <laughs> about the collar band the collar itself comes in two sections it comes with a upper collar and an under collar and they're ever so slightly different in size so it's really important that you cut those out and not two of two of one you know they are it does make a difference to the sewing and I also just wanted to mention that the collar band on the other shirt that I did, that actually has a separate piece and it is a different size to the collar band that you use to go with the actual collar itself. So I just wanted to mention that the piece that you need for um, the shirt with an actual turnover collar, the collar band section is G. And I think for the section um, with the just the, the granddad style collar or the mandarin style collar, I think that's H, I'll have to double check. Um, but yeah, just make sure that you cut the correct pattern piece out for that too. to see whether or not I could fit the sections out on the cross section and I think I absolutely can. So what I've done is I've just, obviously really helpful because this fabric has got a grid like print on it so I've been able to use that to my advantage and all I've done is I have folded this so that it is exactly down the diagonal of one of the, um, the boxes all the way down and then I have placed my um, pattern pieces on that using that diagonal line as my grain line so that I can put my pocket piece on there, my yoke piece and my um, centre front section. So I'm going to have to cut that out, move it around again so that I can cut out a second yoke piece but other than that I'm then very nearly done with all the cutting out. So I'll get that done and then hopefully we can get on to interfacing and sewing. So I've got all of my pieces cut out. I have to say, it was a bit touch and go there at the end. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't think I'm going to get this final facing piece out. And I don't think that my facings front and back are going to match, but they're on the inside of the shirt, so I don't think it's going to matter too much. Hopefully I've got everything lining up on the front and, um, and on the back and on the side seams. But like I say, I do like to try and pattern match, but if I don't get it right, 
I'm not going to get myself upset about it. It's just I try if I can. So I am going to pack all of this away. I'm then going to get my interfacing out and um, we're going to start preparing some of the pattern pieces because you have to do a few bits and pieces first before you start sewing. So I'll get all that ready and then go through that with you. Okay, so on page nine of the instructions, there is a bit of an interfacing guide and it goes through and shows you all the different sections that you need to interface and very clear guidance as to what to do um, depending on which version of the shirt that you're making. So because I'm making the ordinary button placket with the ordinary collar, it gets you to interface half of the button placket. So I will be ironing that on in a moment. So I, it's literally cutting a strip of interface facing that is um, half the width of the button placket but the same length so I've cut that out ready to iron on. There is also an under collar and an upper collar. The under collar does not get interfaced so I haven't cut any interfacing out for that and the upper collar does get interfaced so again I have cut out some interfacing and I will get that ironed on in a little bit. There is also a collar band of which you need to cut two pieces of fabric. So I've cut both of those out and then only one of those gets interfaced. So again, I've cut out one section of interfacing, which I will iron that on in just a moment. And then the last piece of interfacing that you need to do is it tells you to cut out an inch strip of interfacing the same length as the um, shirt front. And then what you're going to do is you're going to place this in between two notches, the two notches on the front. And there are three notches here and it's the first two that you're going to iron it on. And you're going to iron it on all the way down the front to meet the other two notches at the other end. So we're going, I'm going to get that ironed on. And the piece that you need to iron that on, because it's very important that you um, put it on the correct side. So you need to get your left side and it needs to be on the wrong side. Now, this is very difficult for me to show you this because as you can see, this fabric is the same on both sides. You might have a fabric that is um, slightly muted on one side and brighter on the other, or it might be white on one side and colored on the other. So depending on what your fabric is, you need to make sure that you are ironing the interfacing onto the wrong side of the left shirt. So as you can see, I've got the sleeve up here. This is the wrong side of my pattern and this is the wrong side of the fabric and it's the left hand side. And this is going to go in between the first two notches between there and the bottom there. OK, then what you need to do once you've ironed that on, you need to take the opposite shirt front so your right hand side and we're actually going to cut off a section of this shirt which I have to say seems ever so slightly terrifying when you first do it but it is actually the correct thing to do. So this is the right side of the shirt and as I said before there are three notches. The first two are for your indication of where your interfacing is going to go on your opposite piece. And then the third notch, which on your pattern piece, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it on here, it's actually got a dotted line and this is a cut line. We're actually going to cut this whole section off on the right hand shirt front. So I'm going to lay this like this, so hopefully you can see all of that. I'm going to lay my ruler along, making sure I've got my third notch in place for both of those there we go and then I'm literally going to cut that right off just go over it again I think my blade on my rotary cutter is a bit blunt so just go over it twice there we go so it seems a bit scary we've now just cut off a whole section but I promise you that is the correct way to do it and um, when you come to sew it in a moment you'll see why we've done that 
Okay, now that we've got the interfacing on, this is the right side of the shirt, the piece that we didn't cut the front section off and we attached the interfacing. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to press this over once like this. And then once I've pressed that over once, covering the interfacing, so wrong sides to wrong sides, I'm going to press it again like this. So that is totally enclosed. I'm going to give it a really good press and then once I've done that I will flip it over and I'm going to be top stitching down the edge of the shirt and I'm going to top stitch down the edge where this folded piece is and I'll show you how I do that when I come to actually stitch it. Okay so we're finally going to get to do some sewing and I've got my machine threaded up with white thread I've got an 80 needle in and I've put my stitch length on to a stitch length 3 just while I'm doing the top stitching. I won't continue to use that when I'm actually stitching the garment together but just while I top stitch that's um, I feel like that's nice, it doesn't allow the fabric to pull too much etc. And then on my presser foot there are various notches along it and I'm just going to choose one of those notches as my guide to run my fabric alongside so that I get a really nice straight line when, when I'm stitching. So I just pop my foot in. And I'm just going to run along there. I'm not going to go back and forth, although my machine does have a locking stitch at the start and at the end when I'm sewing. But I, I don't necessarily need that because we're going to be sewing these seams in at the end when we put the facings on. OK, so... There's the first, oops, there's the first lot of stitching. So all just stitched along sort of within a couple of millimeters from the edge of the fabric. But now what we need to do is we need to top stitch the other side. So what I'm going to do is I, I really like to top stitch with the top of the fabric on top. I don't like to turn it over if I can help it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my fabric over to begin with see where that falls if I line up using the same notch on my machine and then what I'm going to do is I happen to have this little um oh, can't get that in the <laughs> camera this little um, magnet which I can just attach to my machine like this it just um with the magnet it just attaches to it so it means that when I take my fabric out and turn it over the right way and I'm sewing sort of blindly this is going to keep me in the right place however if you don't have one of those and it really doesn't matter if you don't then all you need to do is you can get a piece of tape now I just happen to have some very pretty sewing washi tape that I've got next to me but it doesn't matter what you've got you could actually just have a piece of masking tape or sellotape it really doesn't matter yeah so I've just got some washi tape and what I'm going to do if I can find the end of it is I could just literally while my fabric is the wrong side up put a bit of the washi tape on my machine stick that down and then use that as my guide but like I say I'm going to use my little um, magnet um, but there are other ways and means of doing it you don't have to have one of these so now that I know where that measures correctly I'm going to turn that over and hopefully fingers crossed this will work <laughs> I'm going to sew all the way down using this guide Okay, so that's now all stitched in place and because I use my guide it has kept it all in line and it's all nicely stitched and hasn't missed anything but I have had the correct side of the um, thread on the correct side of the fabric. Now you might have noticed then that I didn't actually pin anything in place and the reason being is this fabric is quite stiff and once I'd ironed it it really just 
has sat and held itself very very nicely um, but I would say if you're using a slippier fabric I think it would be important just to pin those bits in place so that is the first side of the shirt done I'm now going to grab the left hand side I think it is and um, show you what we're going to do with that so now that we've got the right side of our shirt um, semi-prepared, I'm now going to start preparing the left side. And to do that, I'm going to take the button placket that we attached the interfacing to, and we attached it so that it was covering half of the um, placket. And I'm going to iron that, again, wrong sides to wrong sides, like this, press that down all the way and then once I've done that I'm going to attach that to the left side of my shirt. Okay so now we've got the right side of the um, shirt and I've got this facing right sides up. Like I said earlier it's difficult to tell because my fabric is the same each side. So this is the right side of the shirt, right side facing me and I'm now taking the um, button placket that we ironed earlier and we ironed it right sides together and one side has got interfacing on it which is this side and one side has not got interfacing on it so we are going to pin this right sides to right sides with the interfacing section onto the right side of the shirt so I'm just going to pin that along there Okay, so now that I've pinned that in place, what I'm going to do is take that to my machine and I'm going to sew that with a one and a half centimetre seam allowance. Okay, so I'm just going to stitch this at 1.5 centimetres and I've reduced my stitch length down to a 2.5, so it's ever so slightly smaller, so I'm just going to get that sewn up. Okay, so we've stitched that together right sides to right sides. I'm going to take this to the iron now and I'm going to press the whole thing away from the um, centre front, so away from the main body of the shirt. So I'm going to iron it like this and when I'm ironing it down like that, I'm going to ensure that the seam allowances are also pressed away from the shirt body as well. When I am at the ironing board and I'm doing that, I'm then going to iron over this raw edge along here. I'm going to iron that over by 1.5 centimetres as well, wrong sides to wrong sides. Now you can do this in several different ways. If you want to get a stitch line, you could just stitch a 1.5 centimetre um, line of stitching along here and you could do that in a nice long stitch use that as a guide to press your um, seam over and then pull those stitches out. I'm going to use my hot hemmer that I got and press it over using that as my measurement. Or you could just simply use a ruler, anything like that, but we're going to press that over by 1.75. Uh, so I'm going to press everything away from the shirt body, seam allowances and the main placket and then press this over by 1.5 centimetres. Once I've done that, I will then refold it back in half so this is all nicely enclosed and then I'll come back and show you what we're going to do next. Okay, so this um, ironed edge is now encasing all of the raw edges so everything looks really nice and neat and I'm now going to sew this down. Again, I'm going to do it from the right side and I'm going to do exactly the same as I did on the other, on the other um, left piece. I'm going to use this edge and stitch down here using a notch on my presser foot to use as a guide and then I'm going to turn this over measure exactly where this falls on my machine and top stitch the other side. So I'll get that done now. And I'm going to increase my stitch length to a three again. There we go, so all nicely sewn together with nice um, even stitches down each side. So just going to move on to the next step. Okay, so the next stage is the optional pocket. Obviously this is something that you don't have to put in, it's entirely up to you. This is the um, pattern piece that I've got. It's probably not going to show up very well on, on the camera, but the pocket piece has got markings on it. 
Um, <clears throat> the first thing that you're going to need to do is press over this top edge, which has a very slight um, sort of point to it, by one centimetre. So I'm going to press it over by one centimetre, right sides together, uh, right sides to right sides. Okay, and then <clears throat> on the actual pattern piece itself, there is a line drawn right across it, which represents the fold um, line on the on the pattern. So once you've pressed this over by one centimetre, right sides to right sides, we're then going to press this over again at the notches along the straight edge, right sides to right sides. So you'll end up with a nice sort of crisp, hopefully nice crisp um, triangular shape with this um, section folded over and then we're going to stitch that down. So I'll get that pressed and then show you what that looks like. So I've got my pocket piece all pressed. I'm still not 100% sure whether I want this on my shirt front but I'm going to stitch the pocket and lay it on there and see what I think of it once I've done it. So I thought I would show you the process of what I'm going through anyway. So this is the right side of the pocket Obviously, that is the wrong side of the pocket. So just to show you again, I've pressed down right sides to right sides, this triangular um, shape at the top. And then where the notches are, I have folded it over right sides to right sides again. So those raw edges are all encased in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stitch along using a couple of mils and a top stitch size thread. So a um, uh, stitch length three should I say sorry and I'm going to stitch along this line here so I'll just get that done <clears throat> now just as I get to the point on this triangular section I have got something on my machine which allows me to just slightly press my presser foot and it will just leave the needle in and lift the um, foot up so I can manipulate my fabric around. If you don't have that, then just sew down as far as you want the stitching to go for the point and put your needle using your hand wheel into the fabric and lift your presser foot up and turn your fabric and then continue sewing. Um, it just means that you get a nice crisp sort of point on your um, triangle when you're stitching. Okay, so I've got the um, pocket all stitched down and ready to go for the next stage. So the next part of the pocket process is to iron over the raw edges around this section. And what you're going to do is turn it over so that the wrong side is facing you and you're gonna press over one centimeter all the way around. Obviously around the curvy bit is sometimes a little bit difficult, but you just have to sort of press it and go a little bit at a time. And there might be a little bit of bulk there as you're doing it, but you can, and sort of just press it down nicely in place um, and it should be absolutely fine and then we're going to stitch that to the shirt so I'm going to go away and press that and come back and then um, make a decision on whether I'm adding this to my shirt front or not okay so I've got my um, left shirt front here and I've marked on it very naughtily I've done it with pencil <laughs> but it will wash out so it's fine because I've done it before so I've ironed my um, raw edges of my pocket all the way around the edge and I have now put this on the shirt front to see whether I like the look of it. And I have to say, I think I do. I think it looks nice. I think it's gonna add a little bit of interest to the front of the shirt rather than it just being a plain checkered shirt. So I'm going to now pin this in place. So the only thing that I need to say really in terms of when you're pinning a pocket on is just to be really mindful of which direction that you're going to be sewing your at you sewing with your sewing machine so I'm going to pin this in um, and I'm going to be using this edge so I'm going to pin this in place like this and I'm going to ensure that my pins are facing this way all the way around so by the time I get over to this side they should be facing that way 
and I'm just going to make sure that everything is lined up properly. Now I know I've got lines on my um, on my pattern of my fabric and probably it is going to be better to use this because if I do this so that it's slightly out um, it would look really really strange but I'm just going to double check to see whether it is lined up properly against the front of the shirt so that's seven and a half centimeters and that's seven and a half centimeters so we're all good anyway so it's all it's all fine so if you haven't got a checkered pattern like this then I would definitely double check your measurement against um, the edge of your shirt to make sure it looks straight because otherwise it just might look a little bit strange to the eye when you're actually wearing it so I'm just going to get this pinned in Now that that's pinned in, I'm going to do the same method as I did before in terms of using the little notch on my presser foot and I'm going to sew this all the way around. And I will use my um, foot leaving my needle in and my presser foot to come up to manipulate the fabric when I'm going around the curves. So for this um, pocket when I put it on, I'm still going to use a three um, stitch length but I am going to do some stitching back and forth just to make sure that um, it really does stay in place because obviously I mean I don't think I'm going to use this pocket but it's more likely to pull the stitches if anything is placed in it. Just to finish that off, on the pattern it suggests that you do a small triangle um, just to sort of really keep this in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my needle um, just where the stitching starts. Here we go. I'm going to stitch forward um, three stitches. I'm then going to turn my fabric and I'm going to angle it down towards um, halfway down the fold over section. And I'll do the same on the opposite side. Now, I've gone a bit too far, so I've made a mistake there. So I'm actually gonna pull those stitches out because that will annoy me if they are the, not the same on both sides. So it's my mistake, I should have marked it in. So excuse me while I just unpick that. So I'm going to do that again. Um, it hasn't really left much in the way of holes on the um, fabric where I've just unpicked that. But just quick, um, quick tip, I learned this a little while ago, I would never knew this, but on your unpicker, I didn't know if you knew this, but the little ball section there is actually meant for if you've unpicked something and you want to try and um, get the fabric to look, um, you, you know, like there hasn't been stitching in it, you just use that ball to rub over the stitches like so, and those holes that have gone they magically disappear. So I love that. <laughs> so I'm gonna do that again. That's better. Right, okay, so I'll just show you what that looks like. Obviously I need to cut the threads yet, but there is a, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that, but there is a small sort of triangle here, just keeping this pocket in place on both sides. It's stitched obviously all the way around, so it's gonna keep that pocket nice and secure. Obviously I'm holding this up and it's against the light so you can see the fabric behind it but once it's against your body I don't think you're going to be able to see that pattern behind so yeah so that's the pocket on I'm quite pleased with that so now on to the next stage okay so the next stage is to start preparing the back of the shirt piece and the shirt has been designed so that it has a pleat of some sort in it you can either do a box pleat or you can do an inverted pleat and I prefer the look of the inverted pleat so that's what I'm going to do so there are a series of notches along here. Um, you have four notches in total, and I believe that the um, first two notches closest to the center of the back are to do with the box pleat, 
as well as the outer ones but for the inverted pleat we only need to think about these outside ones now when I did my shirt previously with the other fabric, I found it easier to mark the very centre as well with a notch or a pin. So I'm just going to fold my fabric in half and I'm just going to mark that centre section, which actually very handily is actually where there's a line. <laughs> so I could have probably just used that, but I'll just mark it with a pin. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the outer notch, which is here, and we're going to fold it and take it to that center point where that pin is. And I'm going to pin that in place. I'm actually gonna pin it in place with two pins at the, at the center and at the outside edge of the pleat. And then we do exactly the same with the opposite side so find that outer notch, which is here. There's the inner notch, there's the outer notch. And I'm going to fold that. And bring it to the center, like so. And pin that in place. There we go, I'll take that center pin out now. So there you go. You can see now it has a pleat so it's brought that back section in so it's a little bit smaller and this is what we need to do before we um, actually start attaching the yoke so we're going to just take this to the sewing machine and I'm just literally going to baste a line of stitching across there to keep this in place there we go so all nicely um, in place like that and then what we're going to do is we're going to get our yoke and we're going to attach one of the yokes across the back so I'll just grab that okay so there are two yoke sections and they're both identical so it really doesn't matter which one that you use obviously like I said previously my um, my fabric is actually the same on both sides so it doesn't really matter which side I use however obviously you need to just be aware of what's the right side and wrong side on your fabric so we'll just get rid of one of the yokes and we're going to get our shirt back that we've just sewn and we're going to have it so that the right side is facing up, it's facing us. So there's the right side of the fabric. And then I'm going to get the yoke and I'm going to get the right side of the yoke and face that down towards um, the shirt. And the, there are notches on the yoke there are these two notches here which should correspond with the outside edge of your pleat that we've just made on the back. So I'm going to just pin those in place. And the other side. And then I'm going to pin the outer edge together. So on one side and on the other side. And then I'm just going to pin in between here and then I'm going to um, stitch that in place. So I'm going to stitch this just under the one and a half centimetre seam allowance. So on the next stage we need to stitch the right side of the yoke to the wrong side of the shirt. So we've already stitched the um, other yoke in place here and that's right sides to right sides and then we turn the shirt over so that the wrong side of the shirt is facing us the yoke that we've just stitched on is sat underneath it and then we're going to stitch this yoke on top but with the right side of the fabric facing down so what is facing you is both the wrong side of the yoke and the wrong side of the shirt fabric. So I, I hope that makes sense because I know it's it seems really strange sort of doing this, um, but it but it will work out right in the end, I promise. So we're going to do exactly the same. We're going to um, pin together where the notches are at the edges of the um, pleat that we've just made. We're also going to pin together the edges of the shirt and the yoke together and 
and on the other side. And then we're going to pin all the bits in between the pins as well, just so that it all sits nicely in place. Okay, so now that we've got that pinned in, we're going to sew that in place. But this time I'm going to use the one and a half centimetre seam allowance. So those other stitches that, we should, that we've just done on the other yoke shouldn't actually show because I'm stitching on the correct seam allowance now. Okay, so now what you've got is the yoke on this side, which ha is going to be the one that's on show. So that is um, the first yoke that we sewed on. Then we have the yoke on the other side, which we've just sewn on. And if I show you that, obviously if this fabric was had a right side and a wrong side what you'd see is the inside of the fabric the wrong side of the fabric and then this right side of the yoke which is what you quite often see on um, store-bought um, shirts and things so what I probably should have done before I did this which you can obviously do if you're making this yourself is on this inside um, yoke you could have put the uh, label in here I did it on my previous shirt I'll just grab it for you to show you so on this shirt that I um, made I put a label on the inside of the yoke and because I sewed it before sewing all of it together then there's nothing showing on the outside edge and you didn't have to hand stitch it and it's all nicely sort of sewn in. So I'll show you how I did that now. So I've chosen the label that I want to put in this. I've got one that says, um, you've got this. So every time I wear it, I know that I've, I've got this. <laughs> so I've taken um, a couple of measurements. I've measured the center of my pleat here because I know that's gonna be the center of my back of my shirt. I've also measured here, taking off the seam allowance at the top. And this is roughly the center of my yoke of, on my shirt back. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my label in half so I know where the center of my label is. Like so, and I'm going to place that on that center point that I've measured on my shirt. And then going to get my ruler and I'm just going to make sure that that is that's three and a half centimeters that side. So I'm just going to pin that in place like so. And then I'm just gonna measure up from this side to make sure that's also three and a half centimetres, which it is, there we go, and I'm going to pin that in place. So I think I've caught the other yoke in this, so I just need to take that out a second, holding it in place. Oops. And then once I've got that pinned in, I'm just going to look at it and make sure I'm happy with where it is. I'm gonna make sure there's not any sort of massive gaping going on in the label. Um, but I think I'm quite happy with where that is. So I'm gonna take this to my sewing machine and stitch it, but I'm gonna sew it with a very slightly smaller stitch length because there's not very much here and I want it to be caught in. So I'm just gonna take it down to a stitch length of a two. Could probably go smaller than that if you wanted to. Make sure the other yoke is out of the way and just stitch this in place. Okay, so that is all stitched in I feel really happy with that it looks nice and neat so we are able to get on with the next section and what it means is that when you then sew all of this together you've got a nice neat label stitched in without any stitches showing anywhere else obviously if you wanted to you um absolutely don't have to put a label in you know you can you <laughs> it's not essential that you put one in I don't always sometimes I do when I was stitching the other shirt, I put it in and I thought, oh, I, I actually really quite like the look of that. So I thought I must try and remember to do it on this one. This is such a plain color as well. So it's quite nice. I've got a little bit of 
a little bit of colour on it and it's a nice little sentiment. So we're going to get on with the next section and that is to start um, preparing the seam allowance that we've just done. So what we need to do is we need to do something called grading the seams. Now I don't know if you've um, heard of this before but it's where you um, trim some of the seams but not seam allowances but not all of them and the idea is is that the, it, it creates less bulk when you're um, pressing everything and it looks a little bit smoother when you're wearing it. So I did this on my other shirt and I actually used some pinking shears but you absolutely don't have to do that. Now there, the rule of thumb seems to be that when you're grading seams the seam allowance that is closest to the outside edge of your garment which is this is the um, back of my shirt and the right side so this seam allowance here is the one that's going to be closest to that outside edge so you leave that one whole and you grade down the other ones that are underneath it now I'm just going to use um, some pinking shears but you absolutely could use anything you could just use scissors um, it really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to get that um, trimmed off now. Okay, so we've got the seam allowance from the other side, which is whole. And then we've got the seam allowance that we've just trimmed up that I've done um, by half centimetre. Just cut away those bits of cotton from my label. And then what we're going to do is we're going to press all the seams and all the yokes up so they're all going to be pressed up and away from the sh main shirt body so I'm going to go and do that and then I think I'm going to stop there for a moment and I'll come back a little bit later okay so I've now ironed the yokes for the, the back yoke and the front yoke up and what I did is I ironed it on one side and made sure it was all pressed really, really nicely. And then I turned it over and pressed it on the other side. Now, I know that sounds silly. Well, you know, if you press it once, you're pressing it all. But actually, you get a much crisper finish. And by doing that and making sure it's pressed up evenly on both sides, it means that then the yolks line up really, really nicely here. When I ironed it the first time just on one side, and then turned it over these weren't lining up properly but this wasn't pressed up really fully so yeah it's a really good idea just to press it on both sides so what we're going to do now is what's called the burrito method and we're going to take the shirt and we're going to have the main body of the shirt this is the wrong side facing us with the inside yoke which has the right side of the fabric facing us so i know that sounds really confusing it's the inside yoke and it has the right side of the fabric facing us and on your fabric this will look like the wrong side facing you so what we're going to do now is we're going to take our shirt fronts and we're going to take um, the wrong side of the shirt front and we're going to place that against the right side of the yoke so we're going to put that along there for one side and we're going to make sure that the yoke that's on the outside of the shirt is pushed out of the way so I'm going to tuck that down and we're only pinning it to one yoke so it is the wrong side of the shirt front being pinned against the right side of the inside yoke Hopefully that makes sense. And then do exactly the same on the opposite side. And then just to secure these in place, what we're going to do is we're going to sew along this edge that we've just pinned, making sure that we're only including that one yoke. I'll turn it over so you can see. So that's what it looks like from this side the right side of each shirt front should be facing you and when we turn this over we have the inside yoke with the wrong side facing us and this is the outside yoke pushed away so the shirt fronts are only attached to one um, one of the yokes 
So I'm going to now sew that and I'm going to sew it with just under the one and a half centimetre seam allowance again like I did before. So we've sewn that in place where we've just pinned. So we've got the front of the shirt facing us now. You see here, this is where I've got the top pocket. So this is the correct side of the shirt is facing us. And what we're going to do is we're going to roll up the front and the back shirt all the way up to the yoke. Before we do that, just to note that the yoke on the back is all the way down like this. It's not, it's not included um, within the other yoke at all. I've got the shirt facing me and I've got the shirt front facing me right sides up. And then going from the bottom of the shirt, I'm rolling, rolling, rolling. And as I'm rolling, the other yoke, which we've pushed out of the way, is emerging from underneath. Going up like that, bringing that yoke around, and then I'm going to pin those in place. Now when you're pinning this, and when you're sewing this, you really need to try and make sure that the rest of the shirt is down far enough. If you want to and it makes it easier you could always pin it but I would advise against doing that because you want to um, be able to have easy access to that piece of the shirt in a moment and if you've got pins in there that might make it a bit difficult but if you're worried about um, catching it when you're sewing um, you could maybe just put maybe like one pin in or something but I think it's better just to try and push it out of the way going to sew that but this time I'm going to sew it on the correct one and a half centimetre seam allowance. So that... Okay so you then end up with this very strange looking sort of sausage shaped um, <laughs> parcel and the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to grade the seams so similar to what we did before I'm going to cut um, away the seams which are not on the outside of the shirt. So um, for this, if you can see on here, um, I'm going to trim the, se the same seams as I did on the bottom one. So I'm gonna trim the ones closest to me. So now what we need to do is the very exciting bit, and that is to pull out the shirt from the inside of this package. <laughs> so all you're going to do is you're going to pop your hands onto the inside of the neck opening and we're just going to gently pull this through. Now my material is quite stiff so I think mine's going to be a bit difficult to pull through but this should pull through really really easily. All of those seams are all now nicely concealed so you have the back of the shirt with the yoke and then the shirt fronts and all of the seams, all of the shoulder seams on the inside and the outside are, are now all really, really beautifully sealed inside. And just like magic, you have a really nice, neat looking, well, very much start of a shirt. <laughs> so what I'm gonna go and do now is I'm just gonna get this all really nicely pressed and then once I've pressed it, I'm going to do some top stitching around the edge of this yoke all around here. So that's it for the first video. I hope that you've enjoyed that. I'll now put a little link in on the video so that you can click onto the second part if you'd like to. Mm -hmm.